So tell me a bit about some of the projects that you've got going over there at the moment. Uh, we have a wide variety of projects. So the great thing, um, even though we're from Armenia, which is a small country, we do global projects. Um, we are in tourism apps, so we build tourism apps. We are, um, we have a new startup. So first I want to say is the idea of the pomegranate was, and, and this really worked well with LiveCode, is that a pomegranate actually has about 360 seeds in it. So our concept was that what we would do is we would teach from within and we would start little small clusters. So we started doing contract work. And that's really important. I think we could have started with our own app. I could have funded that. But I didn't believe that the people, and this is not just coders. You know, I didn't have the project managers. I didn't have the UI UX people. I didn't have the people that were going to be able to create the marketing material. I didn't have the people that were going to be able to create websites for me. So what I did was I hired all of those components and I did contract work at first. And so like if, if a lot of people that want to do their own startups, Live Code is a great way to get started, but one of the first things that you want to start with is do contract work for people. Right, sure. Get that experience. Let them pay for your mistakes. Yeah, You're yeah. going to make them, and why not get paid for them? Yeah, no. You'll fix them, yeah. but get paid for them. Yeah. Rather, because what happens is you're going to make those mistakes, and when it's your own money, you're going to run out of money, and you're going to be bankrupt. Right, right. And you're going to, you're going to flop. So always start, my opinion is always start with some contract work, and that's what we did. So we went out and we did some industrial apps, the ones that I had been, we did a small one for World Bank, we did, we did for Caterpillar, uh, Suez, we did uh, uh, water treatment plants, um, and then we moved on um, to doing some other apps, some I have NDAs I can't talk about, but then we went out and we bid for Sony, and that was like massive. So thinking about starting a team, if you're a new startup and you're, you're building your company for the very first time, um, would you advise somebody to build the app themselves? Would you advise somebody to outsource an app? Or what's, your, what's your point of view? How both. much control do you think you, you would do a bit of both? Yeah, yeah, do a little bit of both. Tell me a bit. Okay, so really, again, so for anyone that's trying to do their own startup, and I've been doing this for 30 years, so I've, I've been around the block a few times, my only advice to you is balance. Yeah. Everyone that tries to go to, you know, and again, back in the 90s, was, I'm going to be the next Microsoft, that I'm going to be the next Yahoo, that I'm going to be the next Google, I'm going to be the next Facebook. I've been through so many cycles of these. They all go. Yeah. You know, it's like being a movie star. You know, you've got two or three movie stars, the rest of the 3,000 of them are waiting tables. So don't put yourself in that situation. If you're a startup, the first question is balance. Right? So if you're doing a startup, you have two types. One, you're really, you know, you want to write code, okay? And the other startup is you have a really great idea. Yeah. So let's first talk about the code. So if you, if you want to become a coder, as I told you, find a small project, find that you, you can actually get a contract. So even when you do that, you learn to outsource part of that. And you're going to learn from that person. Right. Okay? You're going to, you know, part of the things that you don't understand, whether it be database or a whole slew of things, you know? And, and pay someone a small amount if you have it, take their code, and as part of the deal is you ask them questions. Right. And most people in the life code community are very, very generous with sure. their time, and they'll be very helpful. Um, so that's, that's the first thing. So if you're going to do, if you want to do code, get a small project. Start with your own little startup. If you really focus and you have a, an awesome idea, you really, really want to do that awesome idea. So here's my suggestion to you. The first thing you should really do is get like Adobe XD. Okay. Now, Live Code has a great form builder. It really, really, really does. But you need to flush out your ideas. Right. So we don't touch one line of code or one card until we have every pixel mapped out. Right. And the great thing with Adobe XD is it's like seven dollars a month. Right. And you can you design the whole thing, you click where you need to be, you show your people who are experts, either yourself or someone else, it runs on the phone, they touch it with their fingers, okay? Then you map that whole thing out. So once we have the whole map thing out, I mean the the the, the whole UI, then we do two things. Okay? Most apps these days are going to be a cloud service with an app. Okay? Then we have you have two functionalities. The first function 
build that entire screen by screen. And I'm telling you, you cannot imagine the time saver. Right. It allows you just, you're just sitting there with the picture and you build it picture perfect. It's not that difficult. And it will save you a tremendous amount of development time. The second thing we do is we build the model, okay? So when you have a web-based server, either you're gonna have a local uh, SQLite file or you're gonna have a, a web server where you're going to be able to uh, create the model. Now, what do I mean by a model? Before you put all of your logic on the server, you have a card, you've designed the UI, and you create a model. That model is either JSON or an array or some kind of all the code that you're going to have on one card. So you simulate that data. It doesn't have to have any logic behind it or anything. Then what you do is you call the web service, the API service, it gives you back your model, and you build and you write the code to load the list. So you can then take that, once you do that, then people are clicking it, now they're starting to quote, react with it, and why people are doing that, then you write your business logic. Right. So don't do your business logic until you've done all the UI, and you've created your data model, because you've already flushed out a lot of errors there, then the final thing is you do your business logic. Right. You do your rewrites to your database and things like that. And if you follow that procedure, you'll be amazed at how faster and more robust your app is.